So this lesson is on chromatic scales and variations on chromatic scales. And um, you can watch the lesson for free, and I hope you learn a lot from the lesson, but you can also buy the book. Um, these exercises are from my new technique book, Classical Guitar Technique, and uh, there's a link for that underneath the video. But like I said, uh, I hope you can learn lots from the video, even if you don't buy the book. So in the last video, we went over left-hand alignment exercises, which are meant to just set up the alignment of the left hand into a good position and really lock that into your muscle memory in various different ways. We went down across the strings, across this way, um, different combinations. We did lots of different things like that. Um, and then right after that section comes these chromatic scales, which essentially puts that four-finger group into action, but in a little bit more of a traditional musical way. Um, after the chromatic scales will come other scales, but um, the chromatic scale is so great because you get so many four-finger groups. So it's very similar to those um, alignment exercises, but with a little bit more going on. So the first one is just a chromatic scale starting on E, um, three octaves, and it's that traditional chromatic scale. So we're going to do a chromatic scale all through here, and then we're going to travel up the first string. So you should practice that with all the different fingering combinations. So like I am, M, A the whole time, um, I, A, or three finger combinations if you're a more advanced player, and do it in rest stroke and free stroke. Um, there's not too much to say. Keep your fingers down as you go. And the one thing I'll say though, is, and often forgotten by students, is be careful of your legato across the strings. So you need to hold this G sharp play the A, so that G sharp has to connect to the next one. Sometimes students, they'll be really legato through the string, but then they let go and, and play the next one, but there's no legato across the strings, so do be careful of that. This third string will only need three frets because um, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, open B. And when you're here and you're shifting up, there's a section on shifts in the book, by the way, and so we'll be going over shift exercises. But that said, when you get to this point, keep your first finger down and slide it across that, finger, uh, that string as a guide finger. So it guides along that string. Don't hold it down and get glissando. Just release the pressure, but hold on the string to get you up there very securely. And same thing on the next one. Keep your first finger down. And then on the way down, sorry, no repeated notes. On the way down, there's not much that I can say to help with the shift to the fourth finger. It's actually pretty difficult, but go slow, right? Go at whatever speed that you need to go at in order to play well. But the only thing I will say is that the actual distance of the frets is only one fret, right? But our hand has to move a long way. But if you can just think that you need to play the semitone next to that note, so that one fret below that note, And hopefully that, that's, that makes it feel small and precise and just visually with your eyes, keep an eye on that fret and move your hand down to that position. When you move down, move your whole hand just down to fifth position and engage the fourth finger. Don't um, worm your hand away from the thumb. Like You should release all the pressure and then your arm just moves the hand down. Same thing on the next one. So you, you'll probably have to practice that a, a little bit just to get it comfortable. But go as slow as you need to go. You know, whatever speed is, is right for you is just fine. You should just work on accuracy and keeping your knuckles aligned with the strings 
Everything that we talked about in the alignment exercises applies here. This is just a little bit harder, so you have to, well, it's a challenge to keep aligned. And you have a shift to deal with. So the next one is a chromatic scale starting on A, just two octaves, but it's a closed position scale, meaning there's no open strings. So what it's going to mean in a chromatic scale is that you're going to have to do some small finger extensions, which are essentially small little stretch exercises, um, or it's, like I said, just little extensions of the fingers. So let's go through it slowly. One finger per fret, extension with one, one finger per fret, extension with one, one finger per fret, extension with one, one finger per fret, stay there, extension, guide finger, one finger per fret, extension with four, one finger per fret, extension, or no, stay there I mean, Extension with four, one finger per fret. Extension with four, one finger per fret. Extension with four. Shift down. I'll play the scale. Make sure that every time you do the extension that you actually do like a little mini shift with your thumb so that when you end up doing the four fingered position your thumb is in the correct place behind your second finger. Also just make sure that you're keeping your knuckles aligned with the strings the whole time even during the extension. Last thing I'll say is during the extension you have to hold on to this note until you hear the, the next string be heard. That way it's legato from this string to this string. If you let go completely, then you stop the sound. So hold on to the note, extend, then play, extend, extend, etc, etc. Now the chromatic scale variation number one with repeated notes, um, this scale is actually probably the hardest. It's, it's tough to synchronize the fingers in this one. Something about the two hands working on this one uh, there's something tricky about it, even though it's relatively simple. The idea is just so you're going to repeat um, every note after the starting note. slow speeds, so go very slow at first. When you try to speed it up, well, I've been doing it a little bit, but like um, it can be kind of like a tongue twister almost for the fingers, a finger twister. So um, if you're having problems coordinate, coordinating the hands, then it's great exercise because once you're used to it, like I just, I'm used to it now. Um, once you get used to it, you've improved your coordination a little bit. So just work on it very, very slowly. Accent the first note of each eighth note group, and, um, and that should help. The, only, the real tricky thing is when you're going up the first string, you have to do that shift fairly quickly. So just go slow um, and keep it really calm. If you've worked on the previous chromatic scale on E, it's the same chromatic scale. You're just repeating a note each time. So um, if you just take it slow, you'll work on coordination. Um, you might trip up quite a bit on that one. So just be careful and take it slow and give it time. It, I tripped up at first as well. 
Um, but then I practiced it a little bit and, um, and it made sense. And um, just was, now it's just not giving me any trouble, but it, it was. But that's great. Whenever you find something that gives you trouble, um, that's a good thing because um, it means that um, some kind of coordination issue has to be resolved, either in your mind or in your hands, right? And the final chromatic variation, number two, in groups of three, is you see this in lots of books, in the Pujol books, the Torega, the uh, Pujol, um, uh, Pumping Nylon, um, Calagaro, uh, like pretty much every book, because it's just a chromatic scale in, in triplets, essentially, with an upper auxiliary. So essentially, you're going to start with an upper auxiliary, which means just the note above. So instead of starting on E, we'll start on F. And so it goes F, E, F, G flat, F, G flat, G, F sharp, G, A flat, G, A flat, A. You get the idea, just we're playing through a chromatic scale, but we're adding the upper note first, and then we dip below, and then we come back to it, and we go to the next note, dip below, and come back to it. It's all fingered and everything in the music, so. Uh, exercise for warming up before concerts because it's quite long it takes a lot of concentration and um, but it's just a chromatic scale so and it really works the on and off nature of each finger so you get lots of like on off and synchronization and it's just a really great exercise to do before um, a concert or as a just a general warm-up I can usually feel my hands um, just starting to get really and my arms starting to warm up during that exercise so same thing as all the chromatic scales, use of the different finger groups, I am, M, A, I, A, or three finger combos, rest stroke and free stroke. And um, this one has a lot of awkward string crossings, like especially across the string sometimes. But if you've already practiced some of those open string exercises from the beginning of the book, um, you would have worked out a lot of your right hand cross string issues. So it shouldn't be too hard here. But that's the thing, if you're having trouble with the right hand in this, just go to the 100 open string exercises that I included and um, really work, them, work your right hand. So this is on automatic pilot and you can concentrate more on the left hand. Um, it's a great workout, these chromatic scales, so I, I highly recommend that you, that you work on them.